Sunday, 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 Sunday school. Sunday, 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 Sunday. guys, it's Miss Waynell from that SundaySchoolGirl.com. You already know, I am basically like your super cool auntie who just happens to teach Sunday school, and I am here to get you ready for Sunday, May 2nd. I hope that you're doing incredibly well, that you had a great week. Things are going pretty well for me. I am so excited because today is actually the sixth year anniversary for that Sunday School Girl. So I am looking forward to celebrating today and all month long because I am so honored and I just want you to know that whatever that thing is that you do, whatever the gift is that God has given you, the thing that you're passionate about, if you ask God to show you, he will help you to see how your gift or your skill or your talent may be able to bless the world. And so I am so honored. I never imagined myself on YouTube and I never knew that I would have amazing friends like you who would be connected. So thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you for being a part of my world. Thank you for bringing smiles to me. And thank you just for being amazingly you. We are reviewing our lesson this week, which is entitled Micaiah Speaks truth to power and our lesson comes from first kings chapter 22 if your adult or your teacher has not already done so let them know that the kid pack is up and available and i'm sure that you will enjoy the activities that are in there that are designed to help get your mind around what it means when we have to speak truth to power. Now, this idea of speaking truth to power really just means that you will stand up and you will use your voice when you see things or hear things that are not right or they're not fair. It is about having the boldness and the courage to say something about it even when you know that the other person may not be happy about what you have to say. And the one thing about speaking truth to power is that it always means that that person is over you in some way. And so in your case, when you have to share things with your parents, you are actually speaking truth to power. When you talk to teachers, truth to power. When you're talking to your pastor or any other person who may be over you, when you're having to share an idea that may be different or an opinion that may be challenging, that is truth to power. In our lesson this week, we're looking at the prophets. Remember, we've been talking about the prophets for several weeks now. You've got to remember the stuff we've been talking about. This is still important. There was a time when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. They went to the promised land. At some point, remember, they kind of split up and 10 of them went to the north and two tribes stayed in the south. Well, at the point of our lesson, they are divided. The 10 are up north, the two are down south. And the king up north, his name is Ahab. There is a piece of land in a place called, well, Syria has access and control of the land. The land is about 33 miles away, but it used to belong to Israel. And Ahab decides that he's ready to take the land back. Now, up to this point, Ahab has fought before with Syria, but it's been three years. There's been peace and quiet, no fighting until now. And Ahab is ready to go to battle to get that piece of land back. Now, remember, there are the two tribes down south. And you know how sometimes you don't quite get along with your brother and your sister, and maybe you guys disagree about some things, but the one thing is true. You guys may disagree a little bit, but you're not going to let the outside come against you. Well, that's what's happening with the North and the South. They don't always get along, but they will come together when it means protecting something that belongs to them. And so Ahab goes to his king brother down South and says, can we go to battle together? That king's name is Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat is not sure that he just wants to jump in and go to battle. He wants to know, what does the Lord say about it? What does God say? Also remember this, there were good kings and bad kings in Israel. And Jehoshaphat is a good king. Ahab is an evil king. And so Ahab just looks at the world very differently. He serves idol gods. Jehoshaphat serves the true and the living God. And so he says, let's see what God says. So Ahab calls his 400 prophets and they all come and say, yes, you should go to battle. You're going to win. You're absolutely going to be the winner. Jehoshaphat is not sure, 
400 people all say the exact same thing? Hey, do you have anybody around here who actually hears from God? And they call for a prophet whose name is Micaiah. Now remember this, a prophet is one who hears from God, who speaks what God wants, and it always happens. And Micaiah is that individual. He doesn't talk the same way those other 400 do. He hears from God. And when they bring Micaiah in, the first thing the king asks is, should I go to battle? Micaiah is like, yeah, go to battle. The, the Lord is going to help you. And the king gets very angry because he knows that Micaiah is being, he's trying to be kind of funny. He's being sarcastic. But Micaiah also knows it doesn't matter what I say to you. You do what you want to do anyway. And so the king says, how long am I going to tell you to tell me the truth before you'll do it? And so Micaiah gives him the truth. The truth is, you're not going to win. You're going to get beat up. It's going to be really bad. In fact, you, king, are going to be killed. And all your men are going to be out there with no leader. They're going to come home and they will have no leader. And they'll have to try to live in the best way that they can. And of course, the king looks at King Jehoshaphat and he says, see, I told you that guy always says bad things about me. He never has anything good to say. And Micaiah carries on. He doesn't change his story. He even goes on to explain that God is allowing this to happen because you haven't been faithful to God. In fact, God even allowed these prophets. A spirit has come and put a lying spirit in their mouths. They're not telling you the truth but it's what you want to hear. And so God has allowed you to hear the truth that you want to hear. And he's going to allow you to be killed. Why? Because you are under the judgment of God. And the king is so angry. He's so angry that he orders Micaiah to be put in jail. He gives him bread and water and very little bread and water to eat as a punishment. Here's the thing about speaking truth to power. It's not always easy. Because you're saying something to that individual that they may not want to hear. It may even go against everything that they're doing. But this is about having the boldness and the courage to speak up when God wants us to speak up. How do you speak truth to power? Well, the first thing is you've got to make sure that God has given you the right words to say. And not only do you need the right words, you have to know that that is a message that you feel very confident about. It's one that you are very, very sure that you need to share. But it's also really important when we speak truth to power to think about how you go to someone and when you go to someone. So let's say that you want to ask your parents. Uh, let's say that, we'll keep it simple. Your parents have said, I don't think that you should go over to your friend's house right now because we are still in a pandemic. But your friend is having, say, a small birthday party and your parents say no, but you really want to go. Well, you've got to find a way to speak truth to power. Well, it matters how and when. Because if you go to your parent and say, I need to go to the party and everybody else is going to the party and you guys are not fair and you never let me do anything, they're probably not going to hear what you're saying. If you go to your parents when they just come in from work or there's something going on or they're doing something else and they're distracted, they're on the phone, you interrupt them, that's probably not the right time. But if you watch for the time and you watch for how, and perhaps you go to your parent and say, I understand that you have concerns about our current environment and I want you to know that I want to be safe. There is a birthday party that I'm interested in going to, and I know that you have concerns. I know that there will be social distancing at the party. I know that we're going to wear masks at the party. I know whatever those things are that make the case for your being safe and really thinking about the things that cause your parent a concern. And then ask your parent, based on that information, would you feel differently if I were allowed to go? That is very different than yelling and screaming and just wanting to be heard. And so knowing when and knowing how to speak your truth can often help you be heard. I want you to be very careful because social media, if you're allowed to have social media accounts, can be kind of dangerous because people say all kinds of things that they probably shouldn't say. So make sure that you're asking God for how to speak that you're not just on a rant saying any and everything, but you're thinking about the other person. Why do they feel the way that they feel? And ask God to give you the ability to be bold, 
to even be willing to speak when your voice is shaking. Even when we think about social justice, you are old enough to speak about social issues in your community and I believe in you and you can do that. But when you're doing that, even when your voice is shaking, speak up anyway. When there are things that are unfair around you, speak up anyway. If you see classmates who are treated unfairly, things even sometimes in your school, be willing to speak up. Now you've got to know, Micaiah knew this, that speaking against the king could cost him his life. And sometimes there are things with us, there are consequences of speaking up, but you've got to be willing to take those if it's worth it. Here's what I really want you to know. Know that we can be honest even when it's difficult. And I know it can be difficult speaking to people who are in higher positions, but we can do this. I want you to feel that God honors the spaces where you are willing to be bold. Being bold doesn't mean that you're not a little nervous, but it means that you will rise above the fear and act anyway. Finally, I want you to remember that as long as the Lord lives, that you can be bold sharing what he says and sharing the things that he puts on your heart to speak to power. That's our lesson for this week. I hope it was helpful and I look forward to seeing you next week. Everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.